listening inside of a relationship. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Relationship Thursday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author of the book, The Relationship Success Handbook. Get rid of your problems, not your partner. Now, this particular conversation came into play because I saw two different incidences recently that really made this topic one that I, I felt needed to be discussed. One of them had to do, again, I don't know how many of you have ever seen the um, it's Facebook, actually, uh, series. It's called Red Table Talk. It's Jada Pinkett Smith, her daughter, and her mom. They do a series and they talk about very intimate conversations. I mean, they talk about pretty much everything is open for discussion. And for those of you who don't know who Jada Pinkett Smith is, that's actually the wife of Will Smith. But that brings me to the, the, the conversation, one of the incidences I was talking about, and it has to do with Will Smith. He actually, he called it the uh, Red Table Takeover because he actually did his own episode at the Red Table um, without his wife and them there. And that's why he called it the Takeover. But it was very powerful because he told his story. Those of you who don't know his story, you know, it's kind of his dad um, used to physically abuse his mom. And as a young man, of course, he wanted to help his mom, but he's a little kid and he felt helpless. And it's kind of the things that he took on, the beliefs that he took on in terms of the fact that he wasn't able to protect his mom. So, of course, that became a driving force in him to please women and um, because he wanted that acceptance. And then also the entertaining, the, where that came from, his his acting crazy and, and silly and stuff was or just having fun, or but just said entertaining, came from his feeling that he needed to do that because if he's entertaining dad and keeping dad focused away from anything else, then dad won't hit mom, and which is a lot of pressure to put on a young kid, and you know, and and kids take on those these these beliefs, but they also, as you guys know, by the age of five. Whatever a person's, your, your, your personality is pretty much created by that time. So if you at an early age take on those kind of beliefs, those are beliefs you'll take into as an adult. And what he kind of talked about is he ended up taking that into his uh, Fresh Prince series because that became his family. But mentally, and he didn't even realize until he was doing the Red Table Talk that he had actually became the same character on that series because that became his family and mentally, again, without him uh, knowing it, and so unconsciously, he took on the same role of wanting the mom, uh, and that's really what the series was about, him and the original um, mother, um, auntie, I should say, Aunt Viv, they had a, an ongoing feud for, for like 30 years and they were doing a 30 year anniversary and that's of the show. And that's what kind of brought them that they needed to get a healing. And that's really what the, the, again, this particular one was about. If you guys get a chance to look at it, it's very, very powerful. And, but it all comes to listening because she felt that he, well, what happened was he kind of wanted to please her. Because again, remember the role he took on mentally because she was basically his aunt, his aunt, but playing almost like his mother at the same time in that series. And so he wanted to please her. Again, not knowing that that's what he was doing. He's trying to please her, but the way he was doing that is through entertaining, acting crazy. But the, the original aunt comes from a very professional background who felt that as we're doing this series, there needs to be more professionalism. So... The personality, because nobody's really talking, nobody's communicating, nobody's listening, nobody's understanding each other, friction was created and the relationship ended up um, a disaster. And really for her, uh, even more. I mean, he had the pain of knowing that their relationship had disappeared, but she explained to him that he destroyed her future. I mean, her, um, her, her career. And that she lost her husband home and, and, you know, all the different things that went on. Again, I don't want to tell you the whole thing because it's very interesting to listen to. 
the main thing, again, I got from that is kind of what we're talking about here is if you're not listening because she had told him, you know, that her situation, you know, and he didn't know that. And that's what he told her. Here it is 30 years later. This is news about her situation and what was going on. Listening, communicating. And I know as a 21 year old for him at that point, he had his own issues um, in terms of, he said uh, they were, they flashed it on the, um, on the Facebook uh, pot on the show that he was like $2.8 million dollars in debt to the IRS. And so he was basically saying that this is when his fresh prince was blossoming. So for him, this was his savior, that show. And so here's a 21 year old who's thinking he's on top of the world and all that kind of stuff. So he's not thinking about other people and really not listening, communicating is, which again, at 21 years old, you can't put all that there, but he had a lot of power, more power than he realized. And because he went on a show one time and made the comment that she wanted it to be called the Aunt Viv show, she said that destroyed her career. And so, again, her never knowing, him never knowing her story, they were never able to heal this. Here it is 30 years later, they finally got together, they listened. And, and, and if you watch the way he talked, or we should say he listened to what she said, that's where the healing comes from. It wasn't from him trying to justify where he's coming from or what he did or anything. It was more trying to hear her story, listening, taking in. You know, we've heard the thing about getting in someone else's shoes, um, finding out their story. If we did that more in life and listen to people, um, the world would be a, an incredible place. Um, we talk about when when you see people do stuff like... Um, shootings or you know stuff like that nobody takes the time i shouldn't say nobody but as a society we don't take the time to figure out what triggered that and what got that person there and how do we heal that as a as a society to prevent these things from happening our solution for everything is punishment put them in jail lock them up uh give them the death sentence whatever we're not listening i remember um I went through this once when someone had made the comment about um, they were talking about a good mom. Um, is there such thing as a bad mom or something like that? And and I kind of gave my little feedback and I said, um, people do the best they can. And I said, but we never take the time to step back and find out what who we're calling a bad mom, their story. And there were a couple of people that came after me instantly and, and attacked like, this is not about caring about, you know, what about the victims? What about, it's like, whoa, you missed the whole point of my conversation. You're not listening to what I'm saying. That's why we can't get this stuff resolved because what I'm trying to say is let's get to the root cause of what triggered the person to be, uh, become that kind of person. If we understand that, then we can recognize when people are going through these and we can address them earlier. There was uh, Precious, a movie that was out. And the same thing, I remember there was, uh, the, the daughter had gotten uh, raped by the, the boyfriend of her mom. And, um, and the mom's first thought is, you tried to take my man away. And that was kind of the cry for those who saw the movie was, how can any mom ever take believe the boyfriend and turn on her daughter and they were going on and on and and not one person did I hear say what the mom was going through and that's kind of what my point was I said because what the mom had said in the movie I had the same thing happen to me when I was younger and there was no one there to help me you hear that cry that's what she was doing she was crying out for help she said I got raped when I was younger Nobody was there. And what she's really saying is, I'm still hurting. And nobody cares. And they don't. Only thing people saw is, how could you allow your daughter to be in this situation and you not be there to protect your daughter? What kind of mother are you? What kind of human monster are you? in it? Folks, we got to look at the daughter. We got to help the daughter. That's a given. But don't neglect the mom in the process and make her a monster 
and not go try to get her healed. And unfortunately, we don't do that. We believe punishing people is the way to resolve it. And that's why we can't stop this stuff from occurring because we're not listening to get the answers so that we can nip this stuff, as they say, nip it in the bud, get it in, in advance. So I didn't, I didn't mean to get all deep on this, but but I just want you guys to understand um, the listening, why it's so important, because then we can start to truly uh, address issues. And then the other one was kind of a, a human, uh, a humorous, but at the same time, it can get you in a lot of trouble. But it was a guy, uh, what's his name? Zach Rushing, Zach, Zach Rushing, I think it is. But um, he's funny. I like listening to a lot of his stuff because the stuff he comes up with is hilarious. But 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 what he was talking about was his girlfriend basically had left, and she was telling him, "I'm in a rush, so can you do this for me?" And he he was talking about superpowers. And he was saying that everyone has superpowers, especially women, all the things they can do, you know, can take care of the house, take care of the kids, go to work. He says they're all, you know, have these superpowers. And he said, and men, we have them too. And he says, he said, at least I think they all do. He said, but I know my superpower. He said, my superpower is when my girl is talking to me, he said, I'm razor focused on listening to her and I can block out everything that's going on around me. And I'm tunnel vision, just listening to her. And he said, and in the moment that she stops, I forget everything that she said. <laughs> I like that. Now we all know that means he ain't listening. But for him, he felt like because he's not letting the distractions, but you're still not listening. And that's what, but anyway, bottom line, what he was sharing in this example was, um, she had told, asked him, can you do this? Because I'm in a rush. I don't have time. And I just need you to, he's like, oh, don't worry, babe, babe, I got it. It's taken care of. You can count on me. You know, I'm going to go do that instantly and get it taken care of. And he said, and no longer until <laughs> she was gone, he forgot totally what she said. And he said, I, I can't call her and tell her now, you know, that what was that that you asked me? He said, so what he did is he decided to clean everything in the house. He said he, he just did everything. And he's like... I know whatever it is she told me to do, it got done. And so she came home and she was mad at him. And he's like, well, what could she possibly? I know I did everything. So there's nothing in the house she could be complaining about. And so what she told him, she said, look on the table there. She said, I asked you to mail that envelope. And he said, and he couldn't even get mad because <laughs> it was his fault. She just asked him to mail the envelope. And the craziest and funniest part about that is he said while he was cleaning, he actually picked up the envelope, cleaned around where it was, and put the envelope back down. So he had actually touched what she told him, asked him to do, but because he wasn't listening, <laughs> and he got himself in trouble. But like he said, it's his fault. He can't blame nobody else. But that's why I said listening. Listening is not only hearing whatever a person tells you is their perspective and for them it is the truth and that's what we got to get to that's why you hear me talk about in a relationship you have to feel safe i have to feel like i can be very open with you and share what's on my heart and if i don't we don't really have a relationship and i've shared that before as far as ladies don't tell your man that this is a safe place and then when he starts to share with you, all of a sudden you feel like you got a wimp or you start to treat him differently because you're like, oh, I didn't know he was so sensitive. I know guys have been taught not to share with you. And as I've said before, if he doesn't, if he's playing that macho role and acting like he can handle everything on his own and he's not coming to you, you guys can never have the best relationship possible. Never. Never. It's not possible. And the reason I say that is because Everyone has challenges. Everyone has doubts. Everyone has downtimes. But if I'm playing the macho role, or I feel I can't come talk to you, and these are the most important parts of my life. These are the biggest issues I'm ever going to face. The biggest. And I can't come to you? Think about that. If I can't come to you, with the biggest issues in my life, my biggest doubts, my biggest fears, how can we ever have the ultimate relationship? You can't get to the ultimate stuff in my life. So hopefully 
the ladies that hear that will be willing first to allow your man to do it, but then not judge him because it has to be a safe place. And guys, and I've talked about this before, quit listening to the world telling you you got to play this macho role, um, stressing you out. It's going to end up uh, being a thing that takes you to an early grave. Um, find someone that you can actually trust and open up to because that's a real partner. And so, but anyway, that's why I, the, the whole point here is I'm saying your person has to have a safe place that they could come communicate with you. And then you have to listen. So when I'm actually sharing, I'm giving you my perspective. You may not agree. You may not even, you may not see what I see because we come from different backgrounds, different beliefs, different. That's okay. Listening means you're trying to, you, you, and trying, and we know you either do or you don't, but you get in my shoes and you hear me where I'm coming from, where I'm sitting. That's why I used an example about precious. The mom is telling you, hear me, hear where I'm coming from. And the world's not listening They're, because they have their own perspectives and they believe their perspective is right. And therefore hers has to be wrong. And listening is, I want to understand you. I want to climb into your world. And that's the reason I said, if you have a relationship like that, whoo, that's an incredible relationship. When you have a person that says, I truly, as that old saying, you got two ears, one mouth, use them accordingly. Um, you should listen. In other words, you should listen twice as much as you talk. You got to be willing to say, give it to me and listen. Don't try to justify. Don't try to explain this. Hear where they're coming from. Feel their pain. Feed it back to them, at least your understanding, because a lot of times you're still in your shoes, even though you may not talk. People go, I'm listening. Like the guy we were talking about, with the, I'm listening. No, you're not. You just ain't talking, but you ain't listening. Listening means you actually get involved in the conversation, into what they're saying, and you're taking it all in, and you're feeling their, their pain, even though it may be different from where you stand when you're wearing in your shoes, but trying to fully understand and grasp where they're coming from. And the feeding back is to say, I understand, or is this, do I understand this is what you mean? Or is this what you're trying to get across? Because that's where a lot of uh, miscommunication comes from. Because where I was saying the person says they're listening, but they heard with their own shoes on, so they're still looking at the world from their view versus yours. Even though they listened, they still won't feel what you feel. And so listening is I'm able to truly say, I want to get in your shoes. Tell me what's going on. Talk to me. Folks, you get a lot of crying going on. And that's why I said, ladies, if you do that with your guy, be prepared. If you're telling them, I want you in here, this, this me and you versus the world, we ain't keep no secrets, no... Let's get in this. Um, man, for a lot of guys, uh, uh, if, if it's a macho guy that plays that role, because you know, as I said, play that role, play, you're probably not going to get him to do that because the world has taught him not to do that. And unless he's willing to um, get past letting the world make his decisions for him, um, that's going to be a tough sell to get him to truly open up. Um, and, and I love when I, the more I listen to Will on different conversations, you can see him becoming softer in terms of his understanding. And that's where a lot of people say wimpy or whatever, because he's basically telling you he's starting to see the world differently and it's starting to touch him emotionally because he's feeling where people are coming from. And again, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that the world tries to teach men you're not supposed to do that. Why? You're a human being. You're supposed to do that. You're supposed to feel. You're not supposed to be running around here like you don't care about nothing and that nothing fazes me and that I'm bulletproof because it's a lie. Stuff does penetrate you. Stuff does hurt you. You do have doubts. Who do you turn to? And if you're married, it should be that person or whoever it is that you totally say that you're committed to. That should be the person. That's the part of the commitment. You guys know I've talked about the, um, what is it, the, 
oh man, the my mind went blank there. But you know the 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 rock that's in the water, the and it and you only see about ten ten percent of it, um, and ninety percent of it is under the water. The word will come to to me here in a second. Iceberg. I told you it'd come back, but ten percent you can see. The other ninety is below the water, and then ninety is when people open up. And when they, they share that, and they're not going to share that with everybody. Those are the close relationships. And in your relationship with the person you claim to be committed to, you got to be able to say, the 90, I can share with you. Now, you ain't going to share everything. I mean, like I tell people, I said, there there's things that I share with my mama I ain't going to share with my wife. There's things I'm going to share with my wife I ain't going to share with my mama. That's So so don't, so don't we're not being... Uh, uh, like some people go, you're being, you're being so um, specific or whatever. This is not saying you share everything because it's not humanly possible, first off. But then there are just certain things that it's, it's a conversation that you don't need to have with that particular person. But I'm just saying the intimate things, where your partner is hurting, they should be willing and open to come to you and you should be willing and open to have that dialogue. So anyway, but that's why I wanted to talk about the listening here. It's very crucial in a relationship is that practice doing that, listening, feed it back to make sure you fully understood where they coming from. And then if they want some of your feedback, you know what I mean? And be careful on that because if you're justifying, you're going to create a wall. Because now it's like you shot down. It's like, yeah, I heard what you said. Oh, I kind of understand where you're coming from. But here, let me tell you something. That's not the approach. You can come back and share, you know, well, this is the way I was brought up. And this is kind of the way I saw it and the way I was feeling about it. And if you do that, then all of a sudden, if, if you make sure it's not in, towards them as an attack, I'm just sharing information and then they'll be open to um, to talk to you. But if they feel like you're challenging them, you're challenging their beliefs, you guys going to argue first off because you're not, because you're not hearing them, but then they're going to start to shut down. So, but anyway, listening, very important, practice that. You, and then you guys know I talk about the person in the mirror. That'd be a great place to start. Practice listening even to yourself. Have those conversations like I talked about the other day. Look in the mirror and, 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 and have a conversation with that person and love that person, all your freckles and everything. Have a conversation. Say, man, where I came from, you know, wait, we were told that you had to be a certain side. But you know what? I love you just as you are. And we're not letting the world make this decision for us. Have those conversations. Practice those. And then do those with your partner. And watch how your relationship turns around. Again, listen, understand, and then, you know, validate what you can in terms of um, things that you may agree with. And, and that's the validation. Say, I, I can agree with that or I can understand that or whatever. But don't lie. If, you, if, you, if, you, if it's not something you can agree with, don't sit here and lie because your partner will know you're lying. And that, again, is going to create more friction. So as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now, for those of you who I talked to on Self Love Monday, I look forward to talking to you on Monday. For those on Relationship Thursday, I look forward to talking to you next Thursday. Make sure you run over to ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Again, that's ronsimplifiedmyers.online and you can see everything that I got going on. And folks, just practice listening. It's an incredible skill and it takes practice. Because most of us, we, we weren't taught to listen. And most of us don't listen, even though we say we are. But watch what you do with most people. And, and you can just watch people in general. If you watch two people talk, you will notice nobody's really listening. Because everybody is so busy trying to wait for you to finish so they can give their perspective. But nobody's actually listening. And so it's very unique to actually do. Practice listening, being quiet, really taking in who they are. And again, as you guys know, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care and enjoy the journey. Bye-bye.